Goddesses and queens, it is your girl Yee Yee, and we're gonna um have a different type of video videos this week, y'all. Cause guess what week it is? It's my anniversary. It's my anniversary. So it is one year post op BBL Lipo 360 for me this week, actually. Um, Wednesday, September 30th will be one year post-op for me um, after my BBL and my Lipo 360. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about it, talk to you guys about my experience. But the way my brain is set up, I forgot about a lot of these things, what I had to do, what it took. You know, I'm on a different type of path right now when it comes to maintenance of the BBL. So I figured the best way to get into what I went through and stuff like that is to pretty much do a reaction video of my um, BBL experience. Um, if you guys have been following me long enough, you know that I have my videos up from the beginning, from um, from pre-op to post-op, out to about six months of my post-op. And um, if you guys want to see that. Go check out my other videos. I'm going to have the link all over these videos for the next couple of days. Um, how you can get to it. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to watch some of these videos together. And I'm going to talk to you guys about my experience. Um, talk to you guys as much as I can remember. Anything that I feel like I missed out. I'm definitely going to talk to you guys in these videos. Um, while doing the reaction videos to my post-op. My surgery videos. Period. Um, just in case you're new to the channel, my name is Yee. Uh, welcome to the channel. This is typically a vlog channel. Check out my other videos. Um, I do dabber in different little things. So if you like what you see, please, please, please become a member of this village. You know, I, I promote a lot of self-love. Um, and just, you know, just trying to figure out this thing called life while still maintaining your sanity you know that's what you're gonna get here you're gonna get the real and you're gonna get self-love all the time so let's get into this video i'm actually looking at this video it is called vlog um bbl lipo 360 pre-op appointment okay um and we're gonna see what i'm talking about in this video because honestly i don't forgot y'all so let's get into it oh and yes, baby, I got a wig on, honey. Y'all know I got to throw a wig on at least every few couple of months. Y'all like this color? And y'all know I like my um, brown color. So I threw my wig on. I got my band on because I need these edges to be on fleek for tomorrow. It is Monday. A long day. You know what I'm saying? Sis, matter of fact, before we start this video, go get your glass. That was a big law. Get your glass. Get your snack. I already had dinner, so I don't have no snack right now. And let's get into it. Let's go. All right. All right. Didn't start from the beginning. Let's try this again. Oh, look, this is my old um, intro, y'all. Look at Elijah. Elijah was a baby. Oh, uh, I was, look at my face. I was pregnant and stuff. Hey, girl. Girl, I'm always trying to lose some weight. I need to go eat. Back 
making me. All right, y'all. So I do want to say this. So, like I said, I got my surgery literally a year ago this week, and during that time, COVID was still at its peak or whatnot. It wasn't as bad, but it was um, still around what people was doing consultation via Facebook, via via social media and stuff like that. So when I did my pre-op, my consultation, it was over IG. It was over the um the DM in IG and I and my doctor seen me um you know in the internet but didn't actually see me see me. So here I'm actually on my way like I said to go see him for the first time to actually do a face to face consultation. One thing that I do want to say between the time that you initially do your first consultation to the time that you see your pre-op, your doctor for pre-op, you want to start taking vitamins. You want to start getting stuff in order. When I say vitamins, your uh, folic acid, your iron, your B12, whatever you think that you need, your supplements, your vitamins, you need to start taking that as soon as possible. I would even say a year out or whatnot. You know, I think I did like three or six months out. I started taking iron pills. I started taking, you know, vitamins and all type of stuff just to make sure that you have all the nutrition and everything that you need in your system because after during surgery and while surgery possibly you lose a lot of blood, okay? Um, another thing you want to do during this time while, you know, between consultation and pre-op is buying all the materials that you need. It's very important to be to be prepared pre-op, but it's more important to be prepared post-op. People don't go into that, but post-op is so important. That's when you actually gonna take care of your surgery. That's when you actually gonna make sure that your surgery counts and it sticks and you have to make sure that you're prepared for pre-op. Pre-op is actually more expensive and more like more like raunchy than the actual surgery. Okay, so let's get back into this. Um, so once again, my surgery originally in July, but I had so much projects going on in July, I just didn't think it would have been a good idea. I just had too much going on at work and at home and stuff. So and also in july one of my favorite person had her surgery so i'm glad i didn't do that because you know it gave me time to actually go see her when she was recovering as well love you so much favorite person i don't know if she want me to tell her information so she's favorite person today for a day to day and the only day they had available was um september 30th so today is september 20th I have my pre-op appointment. Oh my god, my pre-op appointment was September 20th, y'all. Now, it's like 1 o'clock, I believe. And it's Tuesday. So, I just want to know why my it's video so is like this. I, I so, probably didn't know what the hell I was doing yet. I'm super excited. I've been trying to lose a little bit of weight just so I won't have so much belly once the lipo is done. I want my stuff to be Flat, flat. You see me like flat. So now, a lot of people go have surgery thinking, okay, everything is done. Like, I just got to lay on that table and then, weepity, everything is done. No. Like I said, pre-op, you are preparing yourself to have a better result. You have to make sure that you're giving your doctor something to work with, okay? So, you don't want to lose too much weight that you don't have enough of fat to actually be transferred, but you want to lose, you want to be somewhat how you want to kind of look already, so when he shape you up, you like being, 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 like on point, okay? So you do want to be, you know, not only making sure that you have your nutrients and your vitamins and your iron on as well, but you also want to help your doctor give you the best results that he can give you by also making sure that you know you watch what you eat in prior to surgery as well okay let me um girl we gonna be here for about 30 minutes so, keep going that's why you guys just seeing the um vlogs of us going to the gym eating good um you'll probably see me with a um with a waist trainer on at home because i want my stomach to be so flat sis 
so flex this like girl where you had the baby where you had the baby said i want that ass that's my i want the kiss man i want the ass beat mm, you feel me so yes i've been working and before surgery you know a lot of people think oh eat what you want to eat do what you want to do and then go to the doctor and then it's a rat baby look oh, what i just said know, a year like, later it's know, still you the same thing you know like baby girl we about to go through some things. You yes. know what I'm saying? And here's all these nutritions that you're going to need. Girl, you take what are you telling? I'm going to take your uh, flock. Flock. I'll show y'all later on because I'm going to do another video. Okay. But that's why you take your vitamins, your iron pills, your vitamins, all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, to get the best results, you might have to lose some weight. If your BMI is too high, which means that you might be a little bit obese or overweight, you might have to lose some weight. If you have an image of how you want your body to look, sis, you might have to lose some weight. You know what I'm saying? You might have to go to the gym and prep your body. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because guess what? After you have the surgery, guess what you got to do? You got to keep that going. You sure do. You just stop after the surgery. If you have it, how, if you have a vision of how you want your body, mm -hmm. sis, you got to work. And the surgery is just a little... It's a little advancement, you know what I'm saying? It's a little advancement to get there, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to work before and after. That's why a lot of people have the faith. That's why a lot of people be around here looking botched or looking like a box or stuff like that because they don't do the work before and after, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys it's not scary. So let me inter interject myself right there. That is so true, guys. Like, like I keep saying, like, you have to do work prior to surgery. You know, I totally forgot about the BMI, but some doctors require you to have a certain amount of BMI. So if you're over that BMI, you're going to be required to lose weight. If you have high blood pressure or any kind of um, conditions prior to, to surgery but you're still eligible to have surgery the doctors might require you to lose weight to eat to you know have a different diet until surgery or whatnot so it's very very important once again to make sure that you are mentally oh my god mentally physically and emotionally prepped prior to surgery and Listen, when I say mentally, that's a whole totally different subject. I really hope that I speak on that on one of these videos throughout the week. But that if I don't, I'm going to come back on the last day and talk about that. Okay? So, let's get into it. All type of thoughts that cross my mind. All type of thoughts that cross my mind. But I try to stay positive. I try to think positive. I make sure before my surgery, before this day, before anything, I make sure and I try to do everything in my power to make sure I have a successful, to make sure I have a successful surgery. You know what I'm saying? To make sure that I'm, I'm healthy enough to do it. I did my last last week. Today, I'm going to find out what is my result for my last. I also have my regular annual checkup coming up next week. Um, just so I can make sure all, everything is like, you know what I'm saying? And then, I was taking my vitamins. I stopped taking my vitamins 30 days prior to my surgery, which on September first is when I stopped taking my vitamins. But guess what? I still, I still, I'm still eating good. At least trying my best to eat good. I'm um, eating a lot of vegetables, eating a lot of fruits taking my veggie drinks, like everything that I can do, either meat, their red meat for that iron, everything, I'm taking my intake different ways, I'm just stopping the vitamins, but that's what is um, advised, so I just stop, you know, I just want to make sure I do everything in my power to have a successful life, to have a successful surgery, um, so, yeah, it's scary, you, we all know what can and cannot happen, you know what I'm saying, and it is the risk. But if it's something that you want to do to make you happy, do it, sis. You know what I'm saying? Do it. I have I have so many friends and family around me that have done it. And some are happy, some are not happy with them. It's all anything, you know. But you do what you got to do. 
And let me say that, um, like I said, like I said in the video, some people are will be happy about their um, results and some people will not be happy. What is so important when you do decide, okay, this is something that you want to do, do your research. Don't rush, okay? So, Sometimes we get so motivated by what other people are doing that we end up or sometimes we do rational decision because we see somebody else do it so mine's gotta be done and it's gonna be like that whatever don't rush this process find you a doctor do your research like i did my research for at least three four years before i did my actual surgery um and I'm from Miami, so I know the horror stories. I know the success stories, but I also do know that a lot of the time when people rush, um, that's when they're they they have a more likely um, a more it's more likely for them to have a bad result. You know, surgery is unpredictable. There's nothing you can do to stop. A mistake to happen okay but if you do the surgery and you make sure that you know all the information of that doctor and you also make sure that you're healthy inside you know it's less likely for something to happen so whatever you decide to do my most important advice is to do your research and take your time this is not a competition you are not in a you know i have to get my body done um first or whatnot this is not a competition if you want to make the decision make the decision because of you if you want to enhance something make it that decision because of you make sure that once you make that decision because of you that you do the correct research intensive correct research make sure that you're picking the right doctor make sure that you know everything about that doctor by the time i was done with my research i knew my doctor address okay that's how intense of a search that i did and research i did before i did my surgery okay and if you know me in real life you know that's some real shit like i i went i deep i looked deep okay i went deep into my search research before i decided to go with that doctor okay Yeah, fun fact, if you guys can see, um, I posted this October 5th, so, and surgery was October 30th, so it was like a week later that I posted this, so, yeah. And keep in mind, I posted it October 5th, but I must have been recording, I started recording since September 20th, so that's cool to know. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to check in back with you guys after my break.
agree. I'm a point man like that. So what the doctor said and um yeah, <laughs> get the girl and get it. I did that y'all like I really I really did that shit like I really did girl what <laughs> okay okay I must have been saying something, y'all. I don't know what I said. <laughs> no, free off. It's a wrap. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the wrap. Um, I am, I'm not shy, but I'm shy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the way the doctor was getting grabbed by skin, it was like, oh, yeah, we're going to use this. We're going to use this. I'm like, sir. <laughs> and then. I'm naked and he just started writing his little notes. I'm like, sir, if I told you this, that is naked, like, but anyway, so, it should, it should, it should be a beam bound, you know, one, two, three type stuff, you know what I'm saying, like, I ain't gonna say, you know, I'm okay, you know what I'm saying, so it's not too much to do or whatever, I just, in particular, about one thing, so, now that's another thing i want to say y'all so whatever it is that you guys want like me i wanted more pro more projection in my butt and i told him during pre-op but i didn't tell him surgery day and even though i have a nice you know you, you see it there but it's not what I really, really wanted. I wanted pro projection. Um, so just make sure that you um, communicate that with your doctor pre-op and surgery day so they won't forget. Um, I'm glad that he didn't go, you know, crazy with it. But I wish he would have went a little, gave me more projection in my butt. Um, so I, I didn't want a bubbly booty. I wanted an upside down heart, but I wanted projection. And I made that clear during pre-op, but I didn't reiterate it. I didn't repeat it again during surgery. And I don't know if he just forgot, but he just didn't give me enough of projection as I really wanted it. So make sure you communicate that. Standing up on booty, I don't want that. I don't want my recording this damn video I ain't gonna lie to y'all like this shit getting on my nerves girl <laughs>
So the only thing I'm a little confused about, so I guess I'll make my decision um, next week, is because my um, mama Sue's mama Sue's that's on the stars when she was like starting the surgery right after. And my doctor said start the surgery a week after. But when I asked him, he was like, it's up to you. It's up to you because right after the surgery, you're going to be in pain. So I don't know if you want to start it right after the surgery. Okay, let me fix that up. So, first of all, when it comes to Fajas, you do not have to. Normally, okay, when it comes to Fajas, your doctor should provide you the stage one Faja. Normally, they do. Um, some hospitals charge extra for the stage one Faja. If they charge extra for the stage one Faja, you could find cheaper Faja stage one um, online for like $70, $80 instead of paying $150, $200 that the clinic might charge you. That's first thing. Secondly, you're only going to be in stage one Faja for like a week or two. Once your swelling goes down, stage one Faja should not fit you because stage one Faja is about... 2x like a 1x 2x like it's like two or three sizes bigger than what your normal size going to be because you're swollen okay so i think my stage one file was an extra large in a week or so or two weeks the max that stage one file is not gonna do you any good you're gonna become very uncomfortable because you are not being compressed properly it's just for the swelling period with your foams. After that, sis, you need to be switching out to a stage 2 Faja to be compressed properly. That's first thing. When I say my doctor said start surgery, I really mean to say massages. So after surgery, you could either start massages immediately after like two days after i think i started like a day or two days after or you could start within six to seven days after okay i felt like i feel like the sooner you start the better you get all those fluids out the system um as women i don't know if anyone like i would compare it to breastfeeding okay once you have that baby you start filling up if you don't if you fill up and you don't get that thing compressed out sucked out you start feeling like like big and stuff so that's exactly what happens to your body your body gets filled up with fluid and it's just build up and if you're not getting those massages to get that out of you it's just you're not gonna feel comfortable it's not a nice feeling so the sooner you start getting the massages First of all, your incisions are still open so the fluids could just come out instead of waiting five to six days that your your incisions start closing up so it's harder to take out the fluids. So then your masseuse will have to reopen your incisions. <laughs> you don't want to go through that. I think I had one that closed on me and she had to reopen it. It was not cute at all. So you don't want to deal with waiting a couple of days and then your incision closed and then your masseuse have to reopen and then the fluids come out you want to kind of just get that pain out the way okay the sooner you start the less fluid you have on you and I believe the less painful it is even though it's painful regardless but I could just imagine being stiff and, and and full of fluid and then trying to get a massage later on like no you don't want to do that to yourself okay so just fyi don't do it to yourself don't do it to yourself okay
you know, provide the drainage. So, guys, I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to report on my way to surgery. I'm going to see if my husband feel like recording while I'm in surgery. And um, if I win and everything goes perfect, I'll be recording after surgery. And you guys can watch it. So, talk to you guys later. Aww. But yeah, guys, so that's the end of the video. But yeah, going to the drainage part. Um, some doctors put drainage on you and some doctors don't. The only difference is that with the drainage, you actually have somewhere for those fluids to go to, okay? They actually go inside a little ball. It looks like a little drain ball, like a little ball pretty much. And all your fluids and stuff like that go in there so you don't have to have blood all over the place without the drainage. Your blood don't have nowhere to go. So you'll be, depending on how much you bleed, you'll be soaked in blood. And then you will have to change bandages every so often, depending on how much fluid you have. Bruh, I didn't have bandages. I wish the hubby was out here. I think I'm going to have him come out here in the next video. Like... Just nasty, okay? Just that. I wish he should have recorded that. Like, literally, he had changed my bandages in the middle of the night when he was um helping me. And blood was just squirting, just squirting, just squirting. Like, it was just, it was just a mess. But, at least you don't have to deal with them removing the draining shits, like, seven days later or something like that. I don't, I don't know much about that because I didn't experience that. But, yeah, literally, a, like, a week later... You have to go get those draining shits removed. And if you're not going to the same location that you got your surgery at, it's kind of hard to find someone to remove those um, draining shits because um, urgent cares don't want to move it. Your primary doctors typically don't want to touch that because they don't want to be responsible of anything. So most of the time, your masseuse will do it for you. And sometimes urgent cares will do it for you. But you will have to do a little convincing. So those are the two differences about drainage issues. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informative for anyone that is interested in getting surgery soon. Um, if you guys have any questions... Please, please, please go into my IG. I love it when you ladies or even fellas go into my Instagram and ask me questions. I love it, okay? So you are not bothering me. Um, I will try to give you as much information that I can. Um, if I don't know the answer, I will honestly just say, hey, I don't know. You might have to ask the doctor that. But if I have an opinion for it and if I know the answer, I would definitely be freely to talk to you guys about it i have no problems with that so please if you have any questions go into my ig ask me any questions the ig is alex and ye vlogs i think let me go look because i got a couple of um, pages so i don't know if it's alex and ye vlogs or alex and ye thoughts okay it is actually alex and ye dot world okay so i'll go ahead and put it underneath here alex a e. dot world so go ahead and slide in my dm ladies slide in my dm fellas if it is a question don't slide in my dm on no dumb shit please um and once again don't forget to like comment subscribe and yeah talk to you later